so in order to be ready to start my tail plait, I spray Solo's tail all over with some water, just plain water, and spray my hands. I then ensure that I run a comb through his tail just to make sure there are no um, knots in the first section. I then take some small wispy bits of his tail at the top and just cross them over. I try and keep these nice and tight. Some people pop a band in there. Um, I, I don't. Um, and then I just, I just work my way down, taking it from both sides. Again, some people take a little bit from the center. I, I don't. I just start with the two, the two strands of his tail. So just keep working your way down your tail, making sure you pull it nice and tight. It's very important to remember that when you are doing a tail plait, there are lots of different ways and methods in which people start off their plaits. Have a look on YouTube. Um, also have a look at the hashtag tail plaiting on Instagram. There are lots of videos on there. So in this next part of the video, you can see that I just work my way all the way down to the bottom of the dock, making sure I pull my plaits nice and tight. Once I've made my way to the bottom of the dock, I then finish my tail plait like you would a normal, a normal plait. So just with your three strands, plait it down. I plait down about maybe four or five inches, um, and then I secure that with a band. After you finish that bit, I then plait the rest of his tail, making sure that I spray it in water so it's nice and damp. I don't incorporate the last part of his plaited dock until I have established my larger plaits. I then make sure I plait it all the way down to the very bottom of the tail. In this next video, I just fold it up like I would a plait and my thread, I pin it in his tail so that it's re there ready. If not, I would I'd probably pin it in my overalls, but on this occasion, I've just popped it in his in his tail plait, not his actual tail. Um, and then I just, yeah, I just stitch it in. I don't really have a method as to how I stitch his tail in. Um, I just sort of pin it where it needs to be pinned. Um, and then at the end, I probably would re-thread my needle maybe four or five times. If I was actually doing this plat to go hunting, I, I want my tail plat to be nice and secure. Um, so just pin the bottom here just to keep that all in together. Sometimes when I roll my plat up, I even pop a few stitches in. You can stitch it as many times as you like. I've not done many for this plait because obviously I was just taking it out straight after. So I've not done lots and lots.
I also find that if I roll my plat up a little bit higher, I've got the actual tail plat to sew it into. Um, but sometimes, and on this occasion, I've rolled it below my tail plat, so I'm then just re-stitching into his tail, not um, into the main tail plat. I just secure it with a few more stitches in the centre. Hey, hey, hey. I have many reasons hey. um, why I like no. to do a tail plait on solo and flip it up to go hunting. The Probably the, the biggest one for me is making sure that it stays nice and clean. When I get home from days hunting, it's usually probably around about five or six o'clock. Uh, it's dark, windy and rainy. I don't want to spend time faffing around. So I leave his plait up um, for as long as I can. So, so it keeps it nice and dry. When I get home, his tail is usually bone dry. It's not muddy. It's up out of my way when I'm trying to wash all the mud off him. My go-to is the lavender wash, smart grooming lavender wash. I also hibby scrub him all over before I use the lavender wash, which gets rid of any gorse um, or any nasties that he may have picked up throughout the day.